we're back with more excitement. It's exciting. Woo! Science! Evolution! Hooray! Okay, so let's talk about a couple things. Um, what was the early Earth like, and how do we know? And what kind of creatures existed on Earth, and what kind of order did living things evolve in? Let's find that out. So I kind of wanted to start by talking about an experiment. So there are these two guys, um, Miller and Yuri. Um, Miller was the guy that thought this up, and Yuri, I think, was his professor. Um, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. All right. So Darwin wrote, imagine, I can't quote him exactly, but he was saying something like, imagine that in some little warm pond full of water and heat and methane and different chemicals, that these these chemicals that we find in living things kind of change and come together and then finally produce life. So um, over time, people were like, okay, well, we have water and we have these, you know, inorganic compounds. Then chemicals will react with each other and change, and we can get the basics of biomolecules, so like um, monomers, things like a nucleotide, an amino acid, um, uh, like lipids, fat, like fat molecules, and then we can make those can join together and form large biomolecules, and those biomolecules can kind of end up stuck in like some kind of little bubble and doing their own chemical reactions, which eventually we call life. So it was like this kind of neat progression here, but nobody could figure out how to prove anything like that. They're like, how are you going to test this or prove this? We can't go back 4.6 billion years and just kind of see. So this guy Miller came up with an idea. He's like, okay, I'm going to make this weird glass thingy and I'm going to add in some water and I'm going to kind of do the water cycle. I'm going to heat up this water, let it evaporate and then let it cool and condense and rain back out. So I'm just going to do a simple water cycle, but I'm going to add the gases that were present in the early atmosphere. So things like methane and hydrogen and, um, maybe carbon monoxide or some other things that, that they think were present in the early Earth's atmosphere. Oxygen was not one of them, by the way. So, and then he's like, okay, well, you know, there's probably lots of energy, like, to, to kind of make chemical reactions happen through volcanic activity and lightning and heat. So I'm going to add some little electrodes, some little sparks in there to kind of simulate um, just natural energy that would have been happening then. Okay. So they turn the machine on, let it bubble up and kind of go through all this stuff and they leave it on for a while. And all the water's trapped in there. It's not going to come out or evaporate out. It's all stuck. It's a closed system. So after a while, the water in there started to turn brown and they tested it and they found, even though they had only inorganic stuff, they found the starts of like organic compounds like amino acids. So they showed that you can make basic biomolecules, basic monomers of, of the biomolecules, the molecules that make up living things from water, energy, and inorganic gases that were present on Earth. So that's like the first step. If, we can if that can be made, then we can make large organic compounds. If we can make those, then we can, um, they can interact with each other. And if that can happen, well, then we can say that this is like a life process. Um, again, this, this sort of thing doesn't happen in like a day. That's why we can't really observe it. This, these kind of processes would take thousands of years. So how have living things changed over time? Well, the first living creatures that we know of on Earth were prokaryotic. That means they were like bacteria, very small, no nucleus, very simple creatures. And they were anaerobic. There was no oxygen on early Earth, so they had to use other gases to do whatever they're going to do. So around this geyser and stuff, we see this discoloration from some of these bacteria. A lot of these bacteria would have been probably extremophiles, like having to live under extreme conditions, extreme heat or extreme saltiness, um, extreme acidity, like random different um, abiotic factors that would affect them. So um, then how did life change? Well, um, somehow photosynthesis started happening, which thinks if that didn't happen, we wouldn't be here. So we still had prokaryotic creatures, simple creatures with no nucleus that could photosynthesize. They could um, turn sunlight energy into sugar. And we have evidence of those creatures. These are stromatolites. 
And you can still find living stromatolites in, I'm pretty sure it's off the coast of Australia. And they look like rocks, don't they? Well, these are, remember, bacteria. Well, it looks like a rock. Is it big or am I looking at something tiny? You're looking at something big. This is a whole colony of these bacteria that live with each other and then grow on top of each other. And after years and years and years and years, like their little dead bacteria bodies just sort of pile up and, and solidify almost, almost like a fossil. Um, and they become the, the place that, that the new bacteria grow on top of, and we call those stromatolites. These are the creatures that basically produce the oxygen on Earth. So thanks, guys. For, for, for real, like, we need that oxygen. I, I, I like breathing. Um, the only problem was, like, if you're anaerobic, oxygen's kind of toxic. So there's this toxic gas being built up. Well, over time, creatures started to develop the ability to use oxygen. And we see bacteria that are prokaryotic and aerobic, ones that use oxygen. And then probably about, oh, I don't know, five or six hundred million years ago, we started to start seeing eukaryotic cells, so creatures that had a nucleus. And remember, like, we're looking for fossilized evidence. It's hard to find a fossil cell. I mean, we, we see evidence of stuff, but like, you know, a lot of these creatures have soft bodies, so we're probably missing like a lot of pieces, but this is the general idea of how things changed. So yeah, eukaryotes evolved, I would say, probably 500 million years ago. I gotta, you can always double check me, and if I'm wrong, I will make sure to change it. But that's all the things that you think of probably when you think of living things, like plants, animals, protists, fungi. The only thing that it's not is bacteria. So what was early Earth like? Um, not cool. In fact, it was probably very hot. Um, when the Earth formed, it was probably very, very hot. It was full of vo volcanic activity being smashed from all directions by um, asteroids and comets, which brought water onto our planet as in the form of ice that then melted, turned to steam, and then rained out over Earth over like hundreds and hundreds of millions of years. So if we're going back like to about four billion years ago, not not quite four and a half, let's say about when we started to see life, like four billion years ago, Earth was hot. There was no oxygen. You couldn't live there because there was no oxygen. And so the first creatures that developed, and the scientists have moved that date back farther and farther, they're thinking life started on Earth probably like 3.9 billion years ago. That's a long, long time. They were anaerobic creatures, anaerobic, simple bacteria, um, and that's all there was until photosynthesis kind of came about. So hopefully that gives you an insight into what the early Earth was like, what life was like in early Earth, and how it's changed slightly over time. All right, bye. Why are you still here? I said bye. Did you like and subscribe yet? Do it. Do it right now. Okay, bye.